The first thing I did with this dress was actually sew the lace to the underlining. And I did that around the straight edges and the curve. You can go the whole way around or just part of it. But when those are attached, I like to lay it all out with the front bodice and the back bodice. And then we're just going to sew the sides to each part. So right now, just um, pinning them right sides together. We're going to sew the side front bodices to the front bodice. And we're going to sew down that long straight side with a half inch seam. Don't forget to do a lock stitch or a back stitch when you start and finish your seams. And this seam should be on the um, inside or to the left of the seam from when you attached the lace so that the seam where your lace is attaching to the bodice can't be seen. And again, we're going to do the same thing on the other side of the center bodice. We're just going to sew a half inch seam to attach the side fronts to the side center, or to the front center, sorry. <laughs> Make sure you trim off your threads. And then when you open it up, we have the front bodice. We're going to repeat this with the back. I like to lay it out. It's just easier for me to visualize and it helps me to make sure I don't sew something on upside down or on the wrong side. So I just lay it out and then fold it over so that the right sides are together. And I usually just put the one pin in the top to hold it right sides together. If you would like to pin the whole way down that seam, go ahead. But it is just a straight line, so you don't necessarily have to. And we're going to do the same thing we did on the front bodice. We're just going to sew that side seam to connect the back side to the back center. And you can see two seams there on the back from where I attached the lace to the center piece. And again, you want to make sure the seam from attaching those two is inside of um, your seam attaching the back side to the back center so that you don't see that thread when you're all finished. And there we have our two back sides. So again, I'm a visual person. I like to lay it out. When you, we're going to attach the shoulders to attach the back to the front now. And make sure you line up that center seam that we just sewed. It'll just look a lot more professional in the end if those seams are lined up. Just sew straight across each shoulder at about a half inch seam. And when I do shoulders, I do like to trim a little bit closer down to that seam just so that there's not so much bulk in the shoulder. It just lays a little flatter. Now we're going to move on to the neck hole. And we are just going to trim quarter to half inch notches the whole way around. And you can definitely cut through that thread that you sewed the lace to the lining because we want to be able to fold it back enough. And again, we're just going to fold those notches back to the inside about half an inch. And you can pin this before you sew if you'd like, or you can just fold it back half an inch while you're sewing. And just go the whole way around the neck, pulling the front to the inside half an inch, and sew the whole way around. Now we're going to go ahead and work on the sleeves. So take your sleeve pieces and we're going to baste across the front. This is called a basting stitch or a gathering stitch. But basically what
what you're going to do is look at the length of your stitch on your machine, and that's the straight line, not the zigzaggy line, and you want to increase that to about five, and then stitch across the whole curve of the sleeve. You don't have to go all the way across the sleeve, just to make sure you stitch across the curve of it. And then you're going to grab one of those threads, and you're going to pull that, hold that thread tight and start pulling the fabric, and that will gather it all along the thread. And just gather it as much as you can. And then we're going to pin it to the bodice. You want to make sure you pin the right sides together. So make sure you're looking at the right side of the bodice. and Pin each edge of the sleeve first. And then I like to work my way up to when I'm pinning. So I'll go from each end and sort of work my way towards the center. And you want to keep all of the sleeve flat while you're pinning that. It'll help make sure as much of the gather as possible is at the center of the sleeve. We want to try to push all that gathering right to the middle of that sleeve so that the gathering is on top of it when we finish up the bodice. And once that's pinned really nice, again, we're just going to sew a half inch seam the whole way across. Do make sure that you sew on the other side of that gathering stitch we just did so that the gathering stitch isn't visible in our final product. You can always pull that gathering stitch out if you'd like, but sometimes after you've sewn it, it's a little bit difficult to get it out. So I just like to make sure that I've sewn on the other side of it so that if I can't pull it out, it's not a big deal because it'll be inside the seam anyways and no one will see it. And then do make sure to go back and make sure needles out. And there we go. And then we just want to make sure to do the same thing on the other side. So again, we're going to pin each side and then pin towards the center and then sew across. When that's done, we're just going to pull the backs to the front with the right sides together. We're going to start at the bottom of the sleeve at the side and we are going to sew down the sleeve to where it meets the bodice, and then we're gonna sew down the bodice. Make sure you trim your threads off. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other end. We're gonna push the sleeves together. We're gonna sew down the sides of the sleeves until we reach the bodice, and we're just gonna turn and sew down the bodice as well. dress complete now, we're going to start working on the skirt. So first we're just going to take the lace overlay and on each end of it or on each side there's a curved edge. We're going to fold that back about half an inch and sew along that curve to give that a nice finished edge along the curve. Again you just need to do about a half inch seam the whole way. Just fold it over once is fine. If you'd like to fold it twice that's fine as well. And again, if you want to pin the whole thing before you sew it, that is fine. And just sew all the way down that curve until you reach the bottom of the lace overlay. And do the exact same thing on the other side of the skirt, because each side should have that same curve. And again, we're just going to fold it back half an inch and sew along that seam the whole way across. Now we're going to take the lining for the skirt and find the edge of it and we're going to line it up with the straight edge of the lace overlay. So not the curved side, the straight side. And we want to line that up with one side of the skirt. And we're going to sew across the top of the skirt and we're going to do a baste or gathering stitch again. So again, increase the length of your stitch up to five and sew all the way across. And I do believe I lost some video. Yep. <laughs> so when you get to that curve edge, just put the next one next to it 
so that the curves meet in the middle and sew the rest of the way across. And then you want to grab one of those threads, hold it really tight, and just start pulling the fabric so that it gathers on that thread. And just gather it as much as you can. I always find that it's easier to gather too much than gather not enough and have to gather it after we're trying to pin it. Just because I think it's easier to open that gather back up than trying to gather it more while it's pinned to the dress. So again, just gather it the whole way across. Now that it's gathered nicely, we're going to attach the bodice. So we're going to fold it down so that the right sides are together. Find that center of the skirt where the two curves come together and pin it to the center of the bodice so that we know that those two curves will meet in the center of the bodice. And then I put a pin in each end so that the ends line up nice. And once the ends and the center are connected, we can start pulling that gather open or just pull the bodice tight to make sure that the skirt is the same length as the bodice. So pull it tight and see there's not enough gathering there. So I can start opening it up a little until it's able to lay flat with the bodice. And just make sure the gathering is pretty even the whole way across and then put a few pins in to hold it all against the bodice. You can pin as much as you want here. I would suggest putting at least a few pins in at least. And then just make sure that sometimes when you gather, the edges might curve in, so that just make sure the edges are all laying flat. And then go ahead and put that in your machine, and we're gonna stitch the whole way across. I switched to a serger just because I chose really thick fabric, but you don't have to by any means. You can definitely just use your regular sewing machine for this. But again, I chose really, really thick fabric, and I wanted to make sure that seam wasn't going to bother my daughter with as thick as it was, so I went ahead and serged all of it. But again, just sew the whole way across to attach the skirt to the bodice. Now that the skirt is attached, we're going to put in the zipper. So again, I'm a pretty visual person. I like to lay it out. So I hold the zipper how it should look on the dress. And then I turn it in towards the dress. And I fold the top of the zipper down so that you don't have to cut it off and it won't be sticking out in the way or anything. I just fold it down. Make sure you're using a zipper foot for this. It's just going to be a lot easier to put the zipper in. It's going to look a lot nicer. And make sure when you fold that top part down, you angle it a little bit so that it doesn't obstruct the teeth of the zipper. It doesn't get in the way. And when you start, again, make sure that you do some sort of lock stitch or back stitch. And then sew the whole way down the zipper. And you want to make sure that you sew at least an inch or two into the skirt, maybe a few inches into the skirt to make sure that they can get it over their shoulders when they're putting the dress on. Something that I like to do when I sew zippers is just fold it back so that it's the edge is going under and I just put a few stitches there to hold it so that the inside seam of that zipper doesn't come out because otherwise it's just going to want to lay flat instead of actually folding under. So just at the top of the zipper I like to put a few stitches to hold it down. I just think it makes it look a little bit nicer and it should be a little bit easier for um, to work the zipper. Then we're going to do the other side of the zipper. So I usually zip it up because I want to see how it's supposed to lay. And then I lay it against the other side of the bodice. And again, I just turn the top of the zipper down and angle it a little so it's not in the way of the teeth. I'm going to switch my zipper foot to the other side. 
Again, make sure you back stitch or lock stitch at the beginning. And then sew the whole way down the zipper. And you might want to mark how far down you went on the other side of the zipper or remember how many inches down you went. You can put a pin there or just remember however you'd like. Um, but that way on each side the zipper is sewn to the skirt the same length down. So now the zipper is attached, we're going to sew the rest of the way down the back of the skirt. And I kind of like to pinch the zipper up so I can see about where that seam is on the skirt so that I can line the seam up the rest of the way down so there's not a funny pucker where the zipper is. And I just squeeze that through my foot. And right at the bottom of the zipper, wherever you stopped sewing on the zipper at least, mine was a really long one that I had on hand, we're just going to sew a half inch seam the rest of the way down. So once you get, you can either pin this the whole way down. I'm pretty bad about not pinning things, especially when it's a straight line, but just definitely make sure that all that fabric is in that seam. You want the lining in that seam. You want the lace in that seam. So it might be a lot easier to go ahead and pin it. Otherwise, while you're sewing, just every once in a while, check to make sure that all four layers are within that seam. And again, it's just a half inch seam the rest of the way down. Now I chose a jersey for my lining and the fabric I used I didn't have to hem because it doesn't fray. If you chose one that frays, I would stop that back seam about three inches before the bottom and then make sure that the edges at the bottom kind of line up. If you have to hem, hem the lace that is, you want to stop before you get to the bottom and then hem that lace. Otherwise go all the way down to the bottom and at this point you'll want to hem the bottom of that seam. And again if your lace doesn't need to be hemmed just sew all the way down like I did. Otherwise make sure you stop before the end and hem the lace before you finish sewing down. And then make sure you trim off any of those threads. I think they're just a little um, irritating, <laughs> hanging around everywhere. And then if your zipper is quite a bit longer than you needed, you wanna cut off the bottom of it. And then I just go ahead and open the zipper a little bit so I can get my needle in there. And again, don't open it all the way because you don't want to break through that zipper and have to put a new zipper on. But um, just enough that I can get my needle to the zipper. And then I just really close to the edge on top of the fabric, I stitch across the bottom of that zipper kind of at a V. So on each side of the fabric and then across the bottom of the zipper and then back up the other side. When you're sewing across the bottom of the zipper, I would manually do this. So turn the wheel of your sewing machine because it is so easy to break a needle when you sew across a zipper. And if you turn it with your hand, you'll be able to feel if your needle hits the zipper and you can just lift that needle back up and move the dress a little bit so that you don't try to push your needle into the zipper and break your needle. Once your zipper is all the way in and you've sewn down that back seam, you can go ahead and fold the lining of your skirt down half an inch and sew the whole way across. But like I said, mine um, didn't need to be hemmed because the fabric doesn't fray at all, so I just left it. But otherwise, you're done. Yay! I would love to see how yours turns out. Please put pictures below. Comment if you have any questions or send me a message where you bought the pattern. Um, if you found this video by chance and you'd like the pattern, the link should be below. Thank you!